Hello and welcome along to the next instalment of my camper conversion YouTube channel. So this video is part of a series converting a VW T5 high top from a bog standard mobile mechanics van into a fully fledged DBLA registered camper van. So I've been cracking on with the inside but I need to do a few exterior jobs before I can complete some of the inside jobs. And today's job is going to be fitting a solar panel. As you can see I've managed to get hold of a really big tall solar panel. This is 270 watt Jinko solar panel. It's 165 centimeters long, 99 wide, so it should fit just nicely on top of the roof, and it should hopefully still leave enough room for a small little skylight as well, like a 30 centimeter skylight, something like that. So this obviously needs mounting in before I can do all of the interior on the roof, things like fitting the headlining, uh, all the LED lights, things like that because I'm going to have to be drilling through the roof to be able to get the cables through for the solar panel down to the controller. As I say, I've already started on the inside of the van, it's all fully insulated all the way around, the flooring's down, the panels have been carpeted, the headlining's been carpeted as well. It's just waiting for the main headlining sheet to be fitted, but as I say, I can't really fit that in until I've got all the cables through for the solar panel and ideally fit a skylight as well. So, first things first, I'm going to get up on the roof and get the brackets out and start marking out where they're going to have to get mounted onto the roof. Get my drill out, get some holes drilled through. I know some people might stick the solar panels down with Sikaflex, but I just like to be uh, more doubly sure than anything else. And if they're drilled through the roof with big safety washers on either side, you know for a fact it's not going to come flying off loose down the motorway when you're doing 60, 70 mile an hour. So safety first more than anything else, so these are going to be getting secured with proper mounting brackets with bolts. So I'm going to get up on the roof, start making some markings of where the panel's actually going to go. And hopefully within the next, well, it shouldn't take that long, hopefully within the next hour or two of work, a couple of minutes within this video, we'll have a fully wired in, brand new, 270 watt solar panel fitted right up onto the roof. So before uh, fitting in the actual panels, it's always best practice just to get up and give the roof a really, really good scrubbing, especially with that size panel, because once that's on the roof, there's going to be no access to the actual roof underneath the panel itself, just because the actual access between the panel and the roof is going to be so small. So this is pretty much really the last opportunity to give the roof a really, really, really good scrubbing before the panel gets mounted. So if you're going to be mounting your panel with the actual mounting brackets like these, like the L-shape or Z-shape brackets, it's always best to actually secure the bracket to the panel and then you can screw the bracket onto the roof. Otherwise, if you're then mounting these brackets on the roof, then having to try and fiddle to get your hand under the panel to get the panel screwed into that slot there, almost nigh on impossible, too much of a pain in the ass. So as I say, secure the panel onto the brackets first then when the panel's laid onto the roof, you can then just mark your holes for where the drilling's required and drill straight through. So I'm going to get these panels mounted onto the back of the pan- uh, sorry, these brackets mounted onto the back of the panel, get it onto the roof, get it screwed in. So I've managed to manhandle the uh, solar panel right up onto the roof. I've marked out all of the areas that are going to be needing drilling. I'm going to be using M6 bolts and nuts to go straight through. We're also going to have penny washers on underneath and above and all of the holes are also going to be fully sealed up with Sikaflex as well because I'm going to be making sure that there's not going to be any chance for any of these holes to let any sort of water in at all. I say I've done a similar sort of thing there, as you can see on my previous T4. That's also been mounted with the same panels, and I've never had an issue with any of those. So I'm going to be using exactly the same ones on this. And as I say, all the holes are going to get sick of flexed round. All the nuts are going to get a bead of sick of flexed round as well. So basically, once they're in, there's going to be no chance that there's going to be any leaks. So it's all been lined up. I've double and triple checked it. So it should all be pretty much okay and ready to start fitting it in. So now the daunting task, well semi-daunting task, getting the drill out and drilling holes in the roof. So just inspecting the holes on the inside and they've all come through fine. Obviously they were all lined up 
so it didn't come through the uh, supporting ribs or anything like that so now it's just a case of getting back up on top as I say, starting to fill back in these holes that I've just drilled into the roof sealing them all up with their uh, Sikaflex all the way around the nuts and bolts as well and then by the time these are all secured in should be fully watertight again with a fully secure mounted solar panel So just a little tip if you're trying to actually mount any panels yourself to stop the, any bolts turning on the top just put a spanner against the actual bolt push it up against the uh, bracket and then when you're turning the nuts from the inside it just then stops the bolt turning on the outside so move this one onto that one get cracked on Right, so I've cracked on and there's all four of the brackets fully secured, fully in place, fully locked in place with the uh, washers and the nuts. And as I said, they've all been fully covered over with the Sikaflex on the outside as well, as you can see there. As you can see there. So there should be absolutely zero chance for any water ingress to be able to get it through any of these holes. So the only thing left to do now is to be able to put a junction box on for the actual cabling. Now I'm going to be snipping the ends off this cabling. I've got an IP65 waterproof junction box. I'm going to be feeding the cables into that and then that's what's going to poke through the roof. So I'm going to put the junction box just to the side of the uh, panel round about here. And there's going to be one more final hole drilled through and that's going to be the entry for the cabling. So that's all the cables fed through, the junction box sealed up and as you can see fully sealed up with Sikaflex as well. I would have preferred to have used white Sikaflex but I've still got plenty of black left and the local shop doesn't actually have white in, they've already got black so it's all going to get neatened up and tidied up when the van gets resprayed anyway. It's going to be going in for a respray when I start tackling all the bodywork so it'll get tidied up then. But with it being high top you can't really see it. When you're looking up at the van either, as I say, you just see the panel, that's it. So that's all the cabling all fed through, the panel all mounted. It's all looking nice and neat. Plenty of cable that's come through the actual roof line as well. So that itself is then just going to get tucked under the headlining. And then there's going to be a join with a job, uh, chock block there, something like that. Then I'm just going to feed the cable running all the way along then down and all of the main junction box and the solar controller charger, battery bank, things like that. That's all going to be round about this area. So I've just finished routing the cabling for the solar panel. I've just made a little cut just ever so slightly in the roof uh, insulation just so the cable that's coming through the roof can then tuck pretty much flush with the insulation. It's going along, there's a little uh, chop blocks joiner in there and I've got some uh, heavy duty cabling going across all the way along, tucking behind that and then it's joining into the rest of the loom that's going to be getting tucked behind the seat belt covers and then the fuse box and battery box are going to be down there so that's all the cabling all ran through and down for the panel now it's just a case of getting it connected up to the solar controller connecting that to a battery, giving it a test fire and see if it's all working it's so I'm just getting around to finishing off the actual solar install I've done a lot of jobs on the van since then as you can see but I've only just got around to actually getting the battery fitted in place I was hoping to get the battery fitted underneath the actual seat but because of the seat itself that's fitted I've got an IREX seat fitted here and the actual seat bevels underneath and when it's going to be moving backwards and forwards it was just going to be brushing against the top of the battery 
So instead I'm going to be boxing the battery in here just next to the kitchen unit. I've got just a basic PWM controller. I was going to get an MPPT one, but for the sake of a tenner, this will get me at least up and running for now. So it's just about to get wired in now. I'm still doing all of the actual wiring at the moment. I'm just getting around to doing all the electrics, so now is going to be the time to actually get the solar wired in. So as you saw earlier on in the video, I've got all the cabling ran behind the headlining. It's coming down behind this plastic pillaring. It's then coming out into just a little bit of plastic conduit there. And there's the cables there. I did already mark up previously which ones are positive and negative. So they're ready to go. When you're wiring in solar panels, you do need to connect the controller to the battery and then connect the actual panels to the controller. You don't connect the panel to the controller first, otherwise it will then possibly send out a spike through to the battery. If the actual controller is connected to the battery first, it actually sees the battery voltage, things like that, and then when the panel is connected, it'll start sending through some charge. Now even though I'm wiring, in, wiring it in today, I'm not expecting to see a single watt's worth of charge because if you look at the windscreen, it's absolutely covered in snow. So it's not exactly the uh, perfect time of year to be wiring in the solar panels because as I said, there's just not going to be any charge at all. There's still about half an inch worth of snow on the actual panel itself as well. But at least once it's wired in, once the snow melts away, it'll start giving off a charge to the battery in days to come. So I've just put the wiring on for the actual uh, panel onto the battery itself, just the terminals. You can see straight away it's actually brought up the voltage of the battery. It's a brand new battery so it's fully charged as you can see there as well. So now it's just a case of connecting the solar wiring and then that's it done. So that's the panels wired into the controller as well and it's actually jumped up in voltage which has surprised me so that's actually showing that the panel is generating a charge. Otherwise it would have just stayed round about the battery voltage, which was around about 12 8, 12 9. But with it jumping up to 13 4, that's showing that the actual panel is managing to trickle through a charge, even in snowy conditions. I'll show you what the panel's actually looking like in a second as well. But in regards to the installation, that's everything done. So that's all the wiring, down behind all of the headlining, down that column, back up into the controller, controller back out into the battery. As I say, this is just a bog standard PWM solar controller. There are a lot more expensive, fancy controllers, the MPPT controllers out there. I was thinking of going with one of those, I might do in the future. And I will put a link in the description to both this type of controller and the more fancy MPPT controller as well. So as I say, there will be links in the description for all of the items that I've used in regards to the solar install, so have a look there as well. So let's have a look at the actual panel itself. As you can see, it's still got a good layer of frosted over ice, but it's, as I say, that's still managing to generate a charge just with what's actually defrosted and what's managing to go through the actual slushy, frosty sludge, basically. So, as I say, I'm quite surprised that's actually being able to generate a charge. It's still got ice hanging over the edge, as you can see there. So, as I say, the panel itself's certainly covered over, and for it to still be going up to a nice charge of round about, what's that, 13.5. I say that's a lot higher than what I was expecting in these conditions. I say it is a big panel, it's a 270 watt panel that's on there. But even so, I say if I'm getting that sort of charge in these conditions, it just goes to show when summer rolls around and it's gonna be plenty of sunshine, it should never be a shortage of power in regard to the battery. So I hope you found this install video useful. If you did, please do give that video a good old thumbs up. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button to my channel as well. I'm documenting everything in this uh, van conversion job by job, as well as future vans to come and previous vans that have already been done as well. Loads of content on my channel, lots more to come. So as I say, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Give the video a good old thumbs up and hopefully I'll see you on the next video of the series. Thanks for watching. Cheers.